Um, today's live is about colour and I've chosen that because some of my students are working with that at the moment and really really enjoying what it's delivering for them and I think that that is really important that we enjoy what we're doing and a lot of them are saying to me that they hadn't realised there was so much involved in colour and I think sometimes we have a tendency to take what's already around us for granted. You know, you look outside, you see grass, it's either green or it needs watering. There's two ways of looking at it. You look at a tree, green leaves, bark, blah, 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 blah. But when you look at it properly and you see all the different shades and the different hues, and then you look, say, at the tree and it inspires you with things. Most people like trees. They might not be huggers, but they like trees. And I could spend all day sitting underneath a tree and just relaxing or meditating, reading a book, whatever. Um, but when you look at them and you see all the different shades, the different hues, um, the way its energy speaks to us, and that gives you a little bit of a an idea of what it's like to use colour within your mediumship and particularly within your development because we don't just look at colour with our eyes we look at it with our senses we feel its energy we feel what it's talking about how it's making us feel and and when we look at that if you look at people who suffer with sad syndrome and I know people who do suffer quite badly with that. I'm one of these, I'm a winter baby, so I, I can just wrap up. I don't mind whether it's raining, foggy, or what it's doing. I don't like black eyes, granted, but there we go, who does? Um, so it doesn't really bother me, but I do have friends who really struggle in the winter and get a little bit depressed because there's no sunlight or very little sunlight. You get up in the morning and it's dark and you go to bed come home from work and it's dark so there's very little daylight in your day it's very little light in your day so I understand the levels of, of of how it affects our moods how it affects the way we feel and think about things um, you know you can go into a room which is beautifully dressed and painted and, and the scene is set but there's something about the colour in there that gives off the wrong vibe. So it, instead of becoming a place where you could sit and feel welcome and enjoy being in that room, it has the opposite effect on you. Which is why sometimes after having your rooms decorated in the same way for a long time, you suddenly need to change the colours because those colours are no longer serving you you are no longer responding to them in the same way and they are not bringing into balance within you what they have been doing. In other words, you've probably grown out of them. So I thought today we would look at some very simple ways of, of working with colour because it's, it's not um, a difficult thing to do. You know, colour is everywhere around us, you know think about things like what words do we associate with colours so if somebody says they're feeling blue that would give the implication that they're feeling low they're feeling depressed they may be feeling a bit ignored but if you think about it within mediumship the colours of blue are about communication they are about using your voice and finding your voice. So for somebody who is giving off that sense and may use the term, I'm feeling a bit blue, I'm feeling a bit fed up, what they actually could be giving signals of is that they're not being heard or they feel they're not being heard. Or perhaps, if it's the darker levels of that colour, are they saying too much have they got too much of an opinion are they actually trustworthy 
in the sense of can you tell them things and know they'll keep it a secret that, that, that they'll keep that integrity all of those things can come from that one little statement and more because if we look at it on the next level of healing it becomes a he one of the healing rays and, and when I first began my pathway whenever I was aware that somebody needed healing I would look at my hands and they would have like a, a blue haze almost to them within my energy and for a long time healing to me was a blue ray it was a blue color um, and over the years that has changed and it has grown but still for me the blue is there it is also a very calming color so perhaps there is a need for somebody to be calming down for a client there needs to be calmness coming into a situation now for that to come into play you would need to look at what colors are also coming in with it and feel those colors and it's about feeling so here is my first tip on how to do that what you can do is just sit quietly for, for a few moments and close your eyes to practice and think of a colour and it doesn't matter what colour it is think of a colour and feel yourself being surrounded in that colour and let it link in with your auric field and sense it how does it feel what sort of thoughts does it give you does it bring any words to mind does it bring memories to you of a situation that you have experienced because remember spirit will work with us in many ways and one of the ways to do that is in bringing us thoughts of situations that we have been in because we have a better empathy if we've been there we don't know how somebody else feels but we know how we felt so it's important that you think of those things so just for instance let's just think of green and all the beautiful shades of green that there are from the palest palest ones right through to the really really dark earthy greens now one of the sayings that we have is green with envy is that because when we are envious we're jealous aren't we and jealousy is an emotion so is it linked to the heart and the solar plexus and is that where the green suggestion comes from? Because it's affecting us here. So is that where we get that statement from? Because if you think about green, it's a colour of growth. It's a colour of hope. If we look at the ground in the spring when the first little snowdrops are starting to pop out, those little green leaves that come up first, it reminds us that everything is waking up, that there is a rebirth in the ground, that once more the planet is springing to life. Green is very much a colour of growth, but of course, obviously, everything has an opposite. So in sensing it with your client, then you will sense whether it's got a really strong, energetic, growth feeling to it or is, does it feel heavy because for me personally if things feel heavy then it is to me on the negative of something rather than on the positive and by negative what I mean is it's on the more difficult side it's something that needs working with so is somebody stuck do they need to be lifted in some way forward? Do they need to be able to see that there's a clearer path than they think there is? Or do you need to just say to them, look, we can't change what is happening here. You need to find a way around it. All of these things can be talked to 
through those colours, through those sensing of colours. And one of the things that I often find for me that happens is that while I'm sensing the colour, while I'm working on that level, I will often get what I ca call keywords. Um, and they're almost like an affirmation in some respects. So there will be a keyword that lets me in to whatever that situation is that I'm looking at. So, for instance, that keyword could be hope. Just for argument's sake, it could be hope. So, have they got hope or do they need more hope? Do they need to trust? Because for me, hope and trust very, very much are interconnected. So we need to look at the way that works for us. Look at the way that you choose the clothing that you wear the colours that you're drawn to that day, go with it, go with it. To some degree, planning what you need to wear is often a good thing, and it does help us, it does help us in our work. I have a few colours that I won't wear when I'm working because I feel they hold me down, I feel they're too grounding, so I would then have to work with my energy to get past that feeling so I tend to wear the colours that I know already give me a lift and that of course changes as we change as our moods change one of the colours I very rarely very rarely wear is a very pale pink and that is because it is such a such such a, a soft colour for me um, that it tends to just make me want to step back and go into that calm place, just cocoon myself a little. It's also one of the colours that I'm very aware of when I have children, small children that have passed to the spirit world. It's one of my indicators, as it were. So I tend not to wear it as a colour, and if it comes to me from spirit, then I'm working with it. Um, but there is no point in me putting myself in a little cocoon of light when I've got to be out there working because my energy needs to go out there, not in there. Um, because this is what it's all about. It's about building our energy and working with it. There are so many, so many signals and signs that we get. You know, you look out in a garden. Very few gardens have just one colour scheme in them. Most have bits and bats thrown about. Um, I know you get some people that need to have just certain colours, but for most people, you know, whatever whatever was in there last year will pop up and it might be a slightly different shade this year or, you know, the birds have flown past and sown some seeds as they're flying along. Something else pops up in your garden. So we need to look at what we're drawn to. We need to look at the colours that are drawing us all the time. Um, because it's telling us something. So, for exercising, use that use that colour experience, that bringing that energy around you, breathing it in, just allowing yourself to be bathed in it, and keep a little notebook and write down all the feelings, the thoughts, and the sensations that each colour gives you and create your own little book. Now, yes, there are sheets. I mean, I got some, we, we all make them about this colour means this, this colour means that, that colour means that. And to a certain degree it does, but it's a guideline. For you, you might need to add something to that. I mean, like I talked about a very pale pink, but what about a rose pink? Now there's a different matter. Rose pink for me is filled with love. It's unconditional love to me. It has it, it just reminds me that I am loved and cared for. And unlike that very pale pink, which makes me feel I just want to go and find my little security place and stay in it. So play with it. Play with the colour. The other thing that you can do is do aurographs, and aurographs are pictures that we do, 
and you don't have to be an artist they could be scribbles they could be blobs shapes anything you want but use different colors on them and then you read that for whoever you're working with that day and i do a lot that a lot in workshops and in circles because it is very insightful it's it's amazing how much you can pick up just from doing you know just allowing yourself to get out of the way just going for the color and doing whatever you want to do it's like nursery school let's just scribble do whatever you want and it is extremely insightful to work with it in that way and although you might think well i would never have thought about that color like that well, that's because you didn't think about it. You experienced it and you sensed it. It had something to say to you. It, you sensed it. And, and that's what it is. It's not about what we think about colour. It's what that colour makes us feel. What sort of conversation that colour is giving to us. And a lot of people, when black comes up, or a dark grey that you can see them oh, it's all you know doom and gloom it's all negative when well, it's not absolutely not um black could be a blank canvas it could be waiting for you to write your own story black could be a need to sit quietly in your own space and not have to share your thoughts and feelings with others it could be a place you need to just sit in for reflection dark gray could mean slow yourself down a bit just you know you're overdoing it you're depleting yourself let's just slow it down and rest and black is the sum total of all colors if you mix everything together you'll get a real black messy thing which i think is quite good um and the other thing about black is when you put other colors with it those colours really stand out. So it is a backdrop, it's a background, it is the beginning on which you can build the picture of life for whoever it is. When people wear all black, and a lot of people say, oh, it's, it, I wear it because it's slimming. But when people wear all black, what they're actually saying is, keep your distance because I want to be on my own. And honour that. And as they start to add colours in, then you'll know they're coming out of that time of reflection. So if you have a client that comes in completely in, in black, with no colour, no jewellery that gives the colour or anything like that, then they're pretty much in a place where they don't really want to talk or they don't even know how to talk. There could be some denial going on there. There could also be a little bit of guilt going on there. So talk to them gently. Use that as a sign to be gentle. But also use it as a sign that, you know, that this is not over. You're not defeated. We can do this. We can do this. And all of these things are important in so many different ways. And I think it's really important not to ignore the things that are around us every day. And as you work with these colours, you will often find that your guides will come in on a different colour energy. One of my guides comes in on a very different energy to the others. And he has a specific task that he does. So I know if I sense that colour, he's here doing what he needs to do. I don't have to say, are you there? Is there anybody there? Because there is, and he's doing it, and he's at it. So what it means to me is that's our sign. That's the ray he comes in on, that's the colour he comes in on, and that is our sign. So all of these things make a story and that story is part of the evidence that spirit bring us part of the ability to expand our awareness just think about your aura being like a rainbow 
full of light and colour. And just think of that rainbow of light expanding out around you. And as it reaches out with other people, so it's connecting with their colour vibration. And that's how the exchange takes place. It's an exchange of vibration of energy. And it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. There is so, so much that you can work with. And the, the important thing and the fun thing about it is, if you have the basic knowledge, then you can build on that and create your own way of working with colour. Because remember, as you've heard me say before, we are all unique. We all have our own way of working. We all have our own way of being. And as such, we take what's introduced to us and we find out how we work with it. You know, tutors and mentors should not be trying to make clones of who they are. Tutors and mentors should be helping you find out how you use the tools that we have. Because the tools might be the same, but we all use them in our own way. Just like we use colour in our own way. So think about it. Start to create yourself a little rainbow book. There's a term for you. A rainbow book. Start to think about that rainbow book. And see how you get along. And you might find that it's not for you at this moment. But you might find that you're having great fun with it. And as such, keep going it. Because do you know what? Every time you go back to a palette of colour, it creates another colour. So it, you can build on this for as long as you want to. It's yours to work with. So have fun. Bring colour into your world and enjoy the colour that's around you in your home and in your life. Appreciate the colours that you see. Um, when I visit Albuquerque and the surrounding areas, the Sandias, I think are absolutely stunning. And they're never the same twice. They always greet you in a slightly different way. And that's because of the shades and hues of the rocks. How the sun shines on it. How the moon glows against it. It's always got a different personality. And that's it about colour. It has its own personality. You know, bear that in mind. You will notice I haven't mentioned particularly the chakras, and I'm sure some of you have been waiting for that. And that's because the chakras are the energy centres. We all understand that, we all know where they are and what they do, or most of us do. I should never assume, but most of us do. And those colours will be where they, or they should be, where they're meant to be. But it's also important that you make sure that they're clean and fresh and vibrant. Because that's what helps keep us balanced. So do a meditation and go through the chakra centres with light. Don't add colour, just light. To brighten, to recharge, to refresh and to ground and balance. The rest of the covers will be around you in their energy and you will sense them, you will feel them and most of all, you'll enjoy them. Everybody's got a colour they don't particularly care for and that's fine. But have you ever wondered why you don't care for? Have you ever wondered what it is that it's saying to you that you don't feel comfortable with? Look into it for yourself and see. So, think about a colour that you don't particularly like. And see what it feels like. See what it is about it that you don't like the feel of. 
and then look at what that might be saying to you because it might change your whole idea about that particular colour. Might not, but it might. And if it doesn't, at least you might understand why you don't like it. So, bear that in mind. Have a think about that. And I will see you all again soon. Bye bye for now.